So next up is what's new in ML.net with Cesar. Thank you. Cool. So let's get started. Uh, welcome to this session about machine learning.net. And my name is uh, Cesar de la Torre. I work as program manager in the .NET team and ML.NET team. And the goal for today is to cover what's new about ML.NET since we launched it in uh, last May. Okay. So uh, if you want to get a comprehensive introduction about ML.NET, many things that we don't have time today uh, to talk about, you, you can you can uh, uh, listen to the session that we had in, in Build in May, and there's a link. But today we're going to be focusing on what's new in very short intro about ML.NET, but then focusing on things like uh, the new database loader, uh, deep learning, what uh, new things we have with uh, image uh, classification and training uh, on TensorFlow. And finally, a sneak peek about uh, Jupyter Notebooks as well with uh, ML.NET. So let's just start with a quick intro on, on ML.NET. First of all, ML.NET is most of all a framework. And it, it is cross-platform and, um, and open source. And it is built for .NET developers. We aim to uh, make it simple. And so you can create your own machine learning models without having a, a lot of knowledge on, on machine learning. And of course, then you use just uh, .NET natively. Then uh, another important point is that with ML.NET, you can create your own models. So it's custom AI, uh, I suppose, or, or pre-built AI where you just consume services. Here, you are creating your own models for your own business domains and your own data and uh, images, for instance. And then we are also extending ML.NET to other frameworks or other libraries like uh, Deep Learning, TensorFlow, and, and, and many tools that I will be showing later. And finally, it is trusted or proven at a scale. Because uh, even when we launched it uh, publicly in, in uh, May this year, uh, there's been like around more than eight years that uh, ML.NET has been used internally by Microsoft in large products like uh, Bing or Windows or Office. Uh, or uh, Azure as well, a few products in Azure are using internally for many years uh, ML.NET. So you can go and search more about in there. Another point that I want to highlight about ML.NET is that ML.NET, because it is a framework, it runs anywhere. You can run it on premises, on your servers, on your laptop, or in Azure, or any cloud, anywhere you want. And because it is cross-platform, you can run it on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, right? So the frameworks that we support are .NET Core. Uh, that's why it's cross-platform. But also, <clears throat> for legacy applications, you can also infuse uh, machine learning into uh, those applications with uh, .NET Framework. And we even have uh, Python uh, uh, bindings with Nimbus ML. So you can generate also um, ML.NET models with Python. And we support 64-bits uh, and 32-bits. So what can you do with ML.NET? There are many scenarios that you can uh, do, you can create models for, like um, having text uh, about customer's feedback and, 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 and create a model for sentiment analysis, or for uh, recommend recommendations about products, or uh, predictive price of something, like a house, or predictive price uh, about a taxi first, like the, the demo I'm going to do later, or um, Anomaly detection, etc. You can go to that URL and see many samples that we have in there and, and do any of those scenarios. And then the other important thing about machine learning is that it's not just like building a, an application. You need to focus first on the model, on the data, which is what you see on the left. Um, you need to prepare your data and build and train uh, your model. And that's kind of the, the back storage process that you do um, as a model creator, as a developer. And you use um, tools on the CLI maybe uh, um, uh, or, up or console applications to build the model. And once you have the model, which is a zip file, uh, when you serialize that, then you can deploy that into your end user applications in, in production. So that would be uh, the model consumption. Okay? So there are two very different um, cycles in uh, when working with machine learning. And then what are the ways you can use ML.NET? Basically, we have three ways. One is just uh, use the plain API in C Sharp or F Sharp. You can research the docs, so you can go to the samples and do a similar case uh, than, than the sample and just write your code and train your model and then consume it. 
But then we also have a tooling to make it a lot easier, especially when getting started. And you can use Model Builder within, within Visual Studio or the CLI, which is doing a, a very similar uh, thing that uh, Model Builder, like training your model uh, and generating that uh, for you. So uh, I want to highlight that the easiest way to create a, an ML, mo ML model is precisely using uh, uh, Model Builder in Visual Studio. And so I'm going to do a demo about that. Uh, basically, when you um, uh, model builder is right now in, in in preview, so you need to download the V6 uh, extension and install it on Visual Studio, and then you can run it in, in, in Visual Studio and create a model. So I'm going to do a demo about that uh, very quickly. <clears throat> basically, you can see here I have just Visual Studio uh, and uh, console app is completely empty, and from there I'm going to right click and at the machine learning uh, model. And so this is like a wizard where you, you have different scenarios in, or custom and you can get into machine learning tasks. But for this demo, I'm going to uh, do the price prediction scenario, which is under the covers are regression. I want to predict what's going to be the prices uh, or the uh, taxi fares of, of taxi trips, depending on on input variables like uh, distance on, or, or time and so on, right? So basically, you can load the data and train the model with that data uh, from a file or from a database. In this case, I'm going to use a file, and the file is in here. It's uh, basically a CSV file with um, a bunch of, um, of data about many taxi trips, um, how long were those taxi trips, uh, or um, how long in time were there, or, and then, of course, what's the fair amount in the past. So with that data, and we have here like uh, uh, 20,000 records or more, uh, we can train the model. And I need to select what's going to be the column that I want to predict on, which is the fair amount, right? So with that, I can train a model. Let's put 20 seconds and start training. So. Something interesting here is that it's not just training with a single algorithm. Under the covers, we are using AutoML, which is looking for different algorithms and uh, hyperparameters combinations, and then selecting the best model uh, for that data set. Right? So in this case, just in 20 seconds, it's, um, it's been looking for a few models. And you'll see that the best algorithm in here has been for uh, so far the light GBN regression. But you don't really need to know all these algorithms when using Model Builder because it's doing that for you, all those uh, tries and, and finding what's the best model for you, right? So now that the training is complete, and this is just a demo, if you have a, a, a huge data and uh, then you might be doing this training for minutes or even hours, but in this case it's quick because it's uh, just small data, right? And here, when you go to the evaluation, then you can see what were the, 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 the models, the best five models, and you can see the light GPM regression was the best one. And finally, we can generate the code and the model. So if I click here and add projects, we get these projects added into the, your solution. And here you can see the model.sib is precisely the serialized model that was uh, for, for the best algorithm. So you could just use it in code, like in, in the code you, we have here, generated for you. And just in, in, in a couple of lines, and I'm going to put a breakpoint, uh, you can see that you can create simple data, uh, sample data, and then predict uh, with that sample data. So let's uh, debug it. OK. So we just got sample data from a record, uh, from a, a file, but you could also create uh, your own data or hard-coded or could be coming from your application. But in this case, you can see this sample data as input data, and then we do a prediction with that data, calling the method predict from the um, prediction engine. And here you can see the prediction that in this case is like $16, right? So if I just... Uh, Move forward, you can see that for that uh, test, uh, predict, um, test data, 
the actual value was uh, 17 and a half dollars and it was pretty, f uh, pretty close the predicted value, right? But this is not all, like it's not just about generating the model and how to run it. We are also providing you um, the code that we actually use for training the model. So if I uh, create mo I write model builder and then create model, this is a custom function that that is going to create the, the, the model. If I go to the definition, you can see here, and I'm going to be running this in, in, in the background, you can see how um, it is loading the data. So let's uh, see the code. Loading the data from the file, then uh, we are building the pipeline, uh, doing data transformations, like converting all the text into uh, numbers because uh, machine learning is all about math and we need everything in numbers. Finally, concatenating all, all the values as uh, input features and finally adding the algorithm it's going to be using and then training the model. And when you call fit, then you train the model and then you can save it uh, as the zip file that we, we were seeing, right? So you can see here in the training, the actual training, we have the metrics, how good was the model, and then um, the prediction that we uh, saw previously, right? So that's how you train a model with Model Builder. And now let's move to the new things we have in, uh, in ML.NET. So, uh, well, before that, just to mention also that uh, with the CLI, the common line interface, you can do the same thing that I just did in Visual Studio. You can also do it with a CLI uh, if you're just in a, a Mac or Linux in just an editor and you don't, you're not using uh, Visual Studio, you can also use a CLI with a similar line that or command uh, below, uh, MLNet, auto train, the task, where's the data and what's it, what you want to predict and then you will get the code generated and the model in the same way. So let's see what's new uh, in, in ML.NET. First thing is the database loader. And basically what you can do with the database loader is uh, you know, just a, a, a three, four lines of code uh, you can access a database and use it for training. And it's going to be loading, streaming data, can be huge uh, amount of data, and, and it's going to be used for training your model uh, as needed, right? Um, you can use it with a SQL Server or any uh, relational database supported by system.data. So it could be also Oracle or Postgres or MySQL, etc. This is in preview, but uh, it's been uh, used quite a few weeks by customers. And let's see a, a demo about that and how is this to use a database instead of a, a file like, a, like we were using in the other demo, right? So in this case, I have um, a project that I generated uh, from Model Builder. It's pretty similar to the previous one and I just made a, a change uh, in, in, the in the class for loading the data because I don't need the attributes. But then the only thing that I also did is I commented the code that was using for loading from the text file, from the file. And instead of doing that, we're going to put here the code for loading data from a SQL database, right? So this code is very simple, uh, should be very familiar for any, for any .NET developer. You can see that uh, I have a connection string here. In this case, it's a SQL local DB, but could be any other database. I have the um, SQL statement. Uh, to my table where I have the same data that I had in the, in the file in this case and then create a database loader and finally provide those parameters in this case a SQL client but could be Oracle or could be any other database and finally we'll load that data into the iData view and the iData view is uh, able to uh, stream data as needed when, when training, right? Uh, and then the training is exactly the same code uh, doing data transformations and then calling fit. So that's not nothing new. So if I just run it, you will see that it's training the same way, but now it's, it's reading from this SQL database that I have uh, in here. Just going to show you. So now it's cross-validating and training, uh, training uh, and getting the metrics. And and it's doing the same thing, but against the, the SQL data, right? Okay, and well, let's move on to the next thing. 
Okay, so another important area where we are focusing a lot uh, lately is about deep learning in ML.NET. So deep learning usually um, you use it for scenarios like computer vision, uh, scenarios with media, like um, you have um, uh, you want to predict things about uh, photos, images, or video, or sound, and then uh, uh, deep learning is based on neural networks, and so you have uh, also uh, some entry data, and then, um, for instance, you could predict if a picture uh, is a dog or not a dog, based on images instead of tabular data, like we do with uh, classical um, with classical algorithms in ML.NET. So the leading libraries in deep learning uh, is, um, uh, are, for instance, TensorFlow or PyTorch, and also about interoperability, Onyx, and, and, and the Onyx runtime. And our strategy is to integrate ML.NET with TensorFlow and Onyx, and probably in the future with, with Torch. And so, but then creating a higher level API and that you can run also locally and create your own models uh, for image classification, for instance. So before getting into the scenario, I want to highlight kind of a, a little bit of insight. So um, in the market or in, in, in the <coughs> deep learning world, um, many organizations like uh, Google or Microsoft or universities uh, have created uh, complex DNN or uh, deep neural networks architectures and pre-trained models like Inception v3 or ResNet or many others focusing on specific scenarios like image classification or object detection and they train those models uh, with a huge amount of, uh, of material of images and <clears throat> and then you can use those models uh, in, in ML.NET. The the difference is that later on we are going to be able to train and do translating with those, right? But let's let's start with a simple scenario, image classifier, right? So you could use uh, one of those pre-trained models and then you get a picture and it says it is a dog or it is an elephant or it is a flower, right? So you would be using um, any of those um, pre-trained models like Inception v3 or ResNet and you can just use that um, that model in, from TensorFlow in, and just score it or use it um, in ML.NET. You can uh, see the samples that we had previously. And same thing for object detection, which is not the same. Uh, object detection, you provide a, a photo, for instance, and then you detect different objects, like in that case, a dog or a person uh, within the same object, or with the same photo. And same thing about, um, this case, a, a cat or a dog within the same picture, right? But the, in this case, it's, it's just about using those pre-trained models. But the important thing, this is, this is the, the key question, is what if you want to classify images based on your custom domain, based on your own images and your own labels, right? So for that, you need to train your own model. And for instance, what if I don't want to just say, hey, this picture is a flower. Uh, I just want to say, I want to be more precise and say, this is a rose or this is a tulip, right? So for that, you can train a model in ML.NET. And what we're doing is uh, uh, using an approach called um, transfer learning and kind of deriving from those pre-trained models and then train on your own images, right? So uh, let's, uh, I want to show you very quickly that you can do that um, with Model Builder. And uh, here I have uh, another sample where I just have an empty project I can add machine learning again, and in this case, I will click image classification. Uh, I select the folder where I have the images. So this folder with images basically has a um, one subfolder per class or per different type of, of uh, images, like they see it's one subfolder or or roses, or sunflowers, and tulips, right? So we basically are going to say that we train this model uh, based on, on those classes, right? So um, this would take a few minutes. I want to uh, move on and show it how we also are working on uh, the API and, and doing the native uh, transfer learning that I mentioned, right? So, so basically, what we are doing is uh, we are using uh, the internal uh, or low-level uh, TensorFlow bindings for C-sharp in TensorFlow.net. And, and with that, we are 
retraining your model uh, using transfer learning. So those models, like Inception V3, uh, maybe was trained with many images, many photos that are comparable, similar to the ones you want to use. So we are taking that knowledge from that pre-trained um, uh, model and then retraining with your own images in the last layer of the, um, of the TensorFlow uh, model. But that means that we are really creating a TensorFlow model under the cover. So it's a deep learning training as well, right? And there's a big benefit that we are doing with this API for image classifier, which is we are doing uh, that transfer learning for image classification in a single line, or maybe three lines uh, with all the parameters uh, that you can see in here, uh, for all that transfer learning, right? So just with, with, with this code, we are able to do all this transfer learning. And then finally generating the TensorFlow model, which is a PB file, uh, and the ML.NET model that you can use, right? So I'm going to run the sample. And here you can see um, the code using the API and the new API, which is image classification, where we are providing, hey, I want to use the, in this case, the, this pre-trained model ResNet, or it could be Inception V3, and a few parameters uh, on, on if you want to use um, uh, the callback to get feedback, and so on. So I'm going to uh, debug and start running the training. It'll take a few seconds while I'm showing you the, the images. So in this case, it's going to be training with uh, around 400 images, uh, right? Like 40 images uh, per, per class. And if you compare this code with uh, the code that you'd need to use uh, by just using TensorFlow and low-level API, it would be like 400 lines. And in this case, we are able to do it by just adding this um, single call to this estimator, image classification, uh, loading the, the images from the folder, specifying the architecture, saying how many uh, tries you want to do on those images with epoch, and, and that's it. And here should be the training um, starting. So it's going to be uh, now the, the first epoch. It has like 80% accuracy, and in a few seconds we'll get many more um, uh, epochs or, or, or training with the images. And finally, we would get the, the predictions that we have, right? So I'm going to keep going because we have more content that I want to cover. OK. And another thing is about data exploration uh, and machine learning experimentation and, and formats that are good for um, learning, uh, like courses and, um, and hands-on lab, right? So if I talk about that and machine learning, uh, what would you think? Uh, I probably would think about uh, Jupyter Notebooks, right? So this is what we are working now as well. Uh, we are providing support uh, for .NET in general, C Sharp and F Sharp on Jupyter Notebooks. Right now, it's, um, we are working on it. Uh, if you want to try it, uh, ping me through tw Twitter, and I will provide access on how to uh, use it. But uh, the public preview will, will be coming pretty soon uh, in, in, in a few weeks, right? Um, so basically, with, uh, with this support, we, we have um, uh, a Jupyter kernel for .NET, which is based on, on uh, .NET Try, and we can run ML.NET code. So uh, I want to show you a demo where I have here uh, Jupyter uh, installed in my machine. You can install it uh, very easily with Anaconda and then launch it. And after that, uh, I install the, the kernel, right? So once you have it installed, you can see that now I can create a notebook for C Sharp or F Sharp. And here I have uh, one of the uh, notebooks that I created using ML.NET. So first of all, you can see here that I'm installing the NuGet packages that I'm going to need uh, for ML.NET or Xplot for plotting data. And, uh, and then that would take a few seconds uh, getting those NuGet packages. Finally, I'm declaring here the uh, input data classes. And here, I can have the code that is loading from the file, like the previous code that you just saw. But I can just run this piece of code 
and then show the schema, and it's running for real, and then showing da data about how this data set is. Like I have the, these fields, and uh, or I could also show a few records. Um, for instance, in this case, and I, I see that um, uh, what kind of data it is. I could do data transformations and show mm -hmm. it later. And, and then even, even further, you can also use xplot and uh, plot uh, charts, like in this case, the di distribution of the taxi trips per cost. Look, I can see that, for instance, most of the taxi trips were in between five and ten dollars. And uh, or I can also plot uh, other interesting information about the time versus distance, and then different color depending on the fur. So I can see that the the fur is pretty much related in this case to the distance and the time, right? And or if I just want to see the relation between the the taxi fur depending on the time, or depending on on the distance, and but then depending on the passengers, for instance, I can see that there's no uh, real relationship here, right? So you can get a lot of insights uh, when plotting data in in Jupyter, and then of course you can also run uh, and build your model here. So here we have the ML.NET pipeline for this model, and I could just run it here. Um, and see the data transformations, or I could append then the trainer and call fit and see how much time with this instruction, uh, percentage, percentage time, and then I see that it took three seconds to uh, train this model, right? Or I can do predictions and then display the metrics and you see it in a very neat way uh, in this document. So basically you can document your exploration or your uh, model creation in a very neat way with uh, Jupyter notebooks. Or finally, I could see kind of uh, how are the predictions versus the actual values. Or even in this case, we it was a regression, so I could be plotting a regression line. Uh, like in this case, what's the regression line and where are the the predictions versus the actual values, right? So. Uh, or even saving the, the, the model. So just a highlight, um, stay tuned for this. Uh, we're going to be working on it, uh, and pretty soon it'll be available in preview. And with that, um, just finishing, um, just want to highlight that there are many other important uh, features in ML.NET, like, for instance, how to um, take into account your model lifecycle in your CI/CD uh, pipelines in DevOps, not just for your application, but also for your model, or model explainability and feature importance. So what are the more important, the most important um, input uh, columns that you have for your model, uh, cross-validation, or how to deploy your model into ASP.NET Core applications or Azure functions. And by the way, I also want to highlight that we have a, a ML.NET YouTube playlist, so you can, you can take a look to many short videos about ML.NET in YouTube, like one single uh, video just about uh, cross-validation, or one single video, and I'm pretty short, uh, to talk about how to deploy into a web API or things like that, right? And about the roadmap, I also want to highlight a few topics. Um, we're going to be uh, evolving and investing uh, on deep learning, not just for image classification, like, like uh, I was uh, showing, but also for object detection, and doing this natively uh, in, in deep learning, in TensorFlow. Uh, we will be moving the database loader as, a, as GA, uh, improvements for Jupyter, and moving that into a preview. Uh, and then we are wor also working a lot with the um, Azure ML team, because uh, uh, that's all another important scenario on how, you, how to integrate ML.NET with, with Azure ML. And Finally, just a few links where you can get ML.NET resources, like uh, how to get started, or where are the samples, or the docs, and, and the videos. And with that, um, I really thank you, and that's all. Thank you. Questions, yeah. if you want to stick around. These are those really cool. I always like learning more about ML.NET, what's happening. I benefit from all of these machine learning tools, but I don't actually get involved with the models. I just no. <laughs> reap the rewards. OK. So let's see. Will ML.NET support? Oh, oh, oh. 
I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the question was, will ML.NET support CNTK? Or the Cognitive Toolkit, I think? Is that what CNTK is? Yeah, CNTK, for? yeah. Okay. So um, initially, we don't have CNTK in the roadmap. Um, our biggest efforts are right now on, on TensorFlow, Onyx, and could be also uh, uh, Torch in the future. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, very cool.